Welcome back to Helicopter Lessons in 10 Minutes or Less. I'm Jacob and this video covers pilot night vision. Now not necessarily talking about night vision goggles or thermal sensors, but in this visu uh, video I'm talking about your actual eyes and their ability to see at night. It's important to understand night vision when flying at night because obviously failure to do so uh, and see hazards along the, the route of flight can lead to crashing into something. So let's get started. Now vision is different in the, in the daytime than it is at night, obviously, and that is at the physiological level. That's because your eyes are made up of different types of cells. Uh, these are types of photoreceptors. And this is broken down into cone cells and rod cells. Each one play a slightly different uh, purpose here. Uh, but your cone cells, this is gonna be for high intensity light situation. Um, either full sunlight or it could be artificial illumination, whatever it is, it's, it's extremely bright outside and your cones are gonna be uh, using that light to give you a high level of uh, visual acuity. Um, so this is what's giving you, say, a, a sharp image um, interpretation. It also gives you the ability to see in color, your color vision. Now rod cells, these are gonna be for your low intensity light situations. This is the very dimly lit you know, type of environments. Light conditions are poor, but your rod cells are roughly a thousand times more sensitive than your cone cells are to light. So how do these cells work together? Well, to answer that, we'll talk about three different types of vision, and that's gonna be photopic, mesopic, and scotopic. <clears throat> Uh, so photopic, this is during the daylight or high levels of, of light. The cone cells are primarily responsible for vision here uh, because the rhodopsin in your rod cells is bleached out. We'll get more into rhodopsin a little bit later. But in photopic vision, you can see the sharp images and distinguish color because it's the, primarily the cone cells that are, um, that are being used for your vision. But as it starts to get darker, you're gonna transition from photopic vision to mesopic or mesopic vision. This is your dawn, dusk, or full moonlight periods. Now, instead of just your cone cells uh, providing you that visual image, your vision is relying on a blend of cone and rod cells. So visual acuity and your color perception starts to go down as it gets these dimmer conditions um, because your cones just can't uh, pick up as much light, but your rod cells are starting to pick up that burden and provide more and more of your vision. And this leads into scotopic vision. Now this is little to no light whatsoever. So the cones are completely ineffective and detail is lost in the cone cells. Uh, there's just not enough light out there for the cone cells to pick up. But our rod cells being a thousand times more uh, sensitive, uh, the rod cells are picking up the, the vision um, or what you see at this point. Uh, so vision is, is degraded from the from what you would normally see in the daytime, but it's not totally lost thanks to the rod cells. Your rod cells contain uh, rhodopsin, which is a photochemical that increases when illumination decreases in the process of dark adaption. So simply put, the cone cells allow you to see in the daytime, rod cells allow you to see at night, um, and then this is getting into photopic, mesopic, and scotopic vision. So moving on, I mentioned dark adaption. So this is a thing uh, that your eyes do go through when adjusting. Now, this is when your eyes are, uh, say, adjusting to low level light conditions. It's like when you walk inside of a dark room from a bright day outside. At first, you don't see much of anything. Then over time, you see dim outlines, and finally, the room has detail. This is the process of switching over from photopic to scotopic vision. Um, it's switching over from primarily cone cells to rod cells. The rhodopsin in your rod cells was bleached out when you were in the sun. Um, and when you first walked inside the room, you couldn't see because there wasn't enough light to register for your cone cells and the rhodopsin was bleached out. So your rod, or sorry, uh, there was, wasn't enough light for your cone cells to see and there wasn't enough rhodopsin built up in your rods to be able to see. So neither one are providing you vision, so you couldn't see. Um, so as the rod cells saturated with this rhodopsin in the process of dark adaption, you could see. And so after... Um, a certain period of time, you could actually see detail in this dark room where you couldn't see it before. This is the process of dark adaption and some, some uh, facts about that um, to follow. So first, dark adaption generally takes about 30 to 45 minutes to fully adapt. Um, over this time, the rods are or the rods become 10,000 times more sensitive. So they're already 1,000 times more sensitive than the cones, but in the process of these 30 to 40 minutes, the rods are getting 10,000 times more um, and 
sensitive to the light uh, as this rhodopsin uh, fades into these cells. Uh, the other one is that lower intensity light reduces the time to, to dark adapt. So let's say um, you're in a uh, moderate to dimly lit room and then you go outside into the dark uh, or at night, you're gonna have a lot faster dark adaption than if you're say outside in a, the bright sun and then you go into a dark room. So really the starting point is gonna affect how long it takes to dark adapt. Uh, next up is brief exposures to light can uh, reset or slow down this dark adaption. So say when you're flying your helicopter, uh, you see a bright landing light or somebody shines a spotlight at you or you see bright flares or something like that. This can reduce your dark adaption or take it away completely depending on the intensity and the duration of the light. It could take as little as maybe five minutes to re-dark adapt or as long as the full 45 to re-establish that dark adaption. Uh, next, um, it's slightly different when you're talking about night vision goggles and night vision uh, or thermal sensors. These are a type of photopic vision when you're using this. So your cone cells are actually picking these up because it's light coming from the tube uh, or the night vision tubes. Uh, so while this does partially reduce your dark adaption, it doesn't completely get rid of it because the light intensity is so low that it generally only takes about two to three minutes to regain the dark adaption when you've been using these type of sights. So lastly, I'll talk about how to protect your night vision. Um, obviously, this is important, especially if you're flying at night, you need to be able to protect this so that you have the best visual acuity when you're flying at night. First one is going to be wear your sunglasses during the day at least. Um, so if you're exposed to bright sunlight for two to five hours in the day, this can affect how long it takes for this dark adaption. Um, so the, once again, the intensity and the duration. So if you're wearing sunglasses throughout the day, you're not exposed to as bright of sun to your direct eye, it can speed up the dark adaption at night. Next, uh, looking at, say, your office lighting. Let's say that you're uh, on night shift, you need to fly at night, and your job recovers, or requ requires you to be on call. You should keep the office lights dim, uh, but especially not bright, to, uh, to keep that dark adaption. So if you have to run out to the helicopter to launch quickly, your dark adaption is going to be a lot quicker the dimmer the, the lights are in the office. Next, uh, the airfield or the aircraft lighting. Um, once again, if you are on the night shift, you got to fly at night. Can you position the aircraft to a part of the airfield with less lights? Um, while flying, try to keep your cockpit instruments to the dimmest usable level to just keep that dark adaption. Next up, uh, check your vitamin A levels or just eat a diet that has vitamin A in it. So the body needs this vitamin A to create the rhodopsin that fuels these rod cells. Uh, if you're vitamin A deficient, so will your night vision. So make sure you eat your things like eggs, butter, cheese, greens, and other foods that are rich in vitamin A if you want good night vision. Uh, lastly, if you're flying above um, 4,000 feet, try to bring some supplemental oxygen. As I outlined in my hypoxia video, uh, reduced oxygen can degrade your night vision. Um, so if you're going to be flying at these high altitudes, bring that, that oxygen with you. And obviously, um, protect your night vision as much as you can if you intend on flying at night. Uh, but that's about all the, have, all the time I have for this video. If you plan on flying at night, make sure you're doing everything that you can to give yourself the best night vision possible because this is just going to increase your ability to see outside the aircraft, avoid obstacles, and really just do your job better if you're flying at night. Um, so protect your vision. Make sure you're doing your, right, uh, your proper dark adaption. But if you learned something new or you enjoyed the video, be sure to hit like and subscribe. Thanks for watching. As always, I'm Jacob, and this is Helicopter Lessons in 10 Minutes or Less. Safe flying.